Hello. I am Mr. Panda, the all-knowing panda. What? Today we will be talking about the Civil War. Oh, fun. Who do you think was the most valuable person in the war? Well, obviously Grant. He won it for the North. You know nothing. The MVP of the war was obviously... Wait. Perhaps we should talk about the three main generals of the war, and then let the class discuss who they think was the most valuable? Like a hands-on history? Yeah! I hate hands-on histories, but fine. Let's get started. Of course, the two most famous Civil War generals are Grant and Lee. Yay! Grant was the hero of the North and Lee was his evil nemesis. Actually, they had mutual respect and were alike in many ways. That's not what I've heard. It's true, Grant and Lee both studied at West Point. Lee actually ranked much higher in his class than Grant did in his. They both fought in the Mexican-American War. Well, I'm sure Grant was more important in that war than Lee was. No, you idiot. They fought together during the whole war, especially at Chapultepec. What did they do after that war? Grant got tired of army life and quit. He failed as a farmer and a businessman. Lee stayed in the army and was a big success. He became the superintendent at West Point, led U.S. troops in Texas, and was in charge of the unit that defeated John Brown's anti-slavery raid on the U.S. arsenal at Harper's Ferry. Well, even if that's true, Lee was from the South, which means he was pro-slavery. Not necessarily, he was actually against the Civil War, but felt a need to protect his home state of Virginia, and Grant wasn't exactly an abolitionist himself. At one point, he did work on his father-in-law's slave plantation. How did they get involved in the Civil War? Lee was extremely well-known and popular. Both the North and South wanted him to lead their armies, and he picked the South. Grant volunteered to rejoin the Northern Army and worked his way up. And then they fought against each other throughout the war? Nope. For most of the war, Lee was in the Virginia area, while Grant was in control of the Union's Western armies. Who cares, at least Grant defeated Lee, which shows he was the better general. It's not that simple. As I said, Lee did much better at West Point, and had more effective battlefield tactics. Grant just understood that this was a new kind of war. What do you mean, a new kind of war? Tactics had changed. Lee brilliantly fought the war he saw, one between two armies, while Grant simplistically fought another, one between two peoples. The Union attacked the industrial capabilities of the Confederacy destroying railroads and factories. This concept is called total war. War against a whole country, not a specific army. Lee's impressive tactical abilities ended up being irrelevant because Grant's overall strategy did not focus on outright battles. Well at least after the war Grant became the President of the United States, Lee didn't accomplish anything. That's not true. Lee became the president of Washington College, now known as Washington Lee, and was very well liked. But no one cares about college. But to sum all of this up, Lee was an excellent general, but he failed to see the changing nature of war, while Grant did, as well as having the infrastructure to back him up. Why look at that, you and Amp. Oppose. We actually learning something. Dance celebration party. I love dancing. Well, moving on. Well, that sure was fun. Now who is this so-called shaman guy I keep hearing about? And what was his famous march to the sea about? Sherman was quite an interesting character. He was first the colonel of a group of volunteers that had not even been made yet. Although he did quite well at the first battle of Bull Run. The disastrous Union defeat made him question his own judgment. Interestingly enough, he was promoted above Grant at the time. How fascinating! However, his newfound responsibility combined with constantly questioning himself drove him crazy. He had to return home for almost two months, where he was labeled insane by his peers. 
goodness. Although the next few years were rocky for Sherman, he proved instrumental under Grant in the siege of Vicksburg, where he was promoted to a two-star general in the regular army. He soon realized that they were fighting a new kind of war, and started to destroy Confederate infrastructure. I am literally on the edge of my seat right now. What happens next? Graham appointed Sherman as commander of the Western Theater of the War when he was moved east. After a few months of fighting throughout the mountains, Sherman captured Atlanta, evacuated the citizens, and burned it to the ground. Not only did this secure Lincoln's election to a second term, but remember how we talked about how Grant realized that this war was a new kind of war? The burning of Atlanta exemplified this fact. So when did this famous march to the sea occur? Well, that happened next. He and his army marched from Atlanta to the Atlantic, destroying everything, and everyone, in their path. This extremely ruthless tactic embraced the idea of total war, and destroyed the South's infrastructure, capacity to fight, and want to go on. While some historian today condemn Sherman due to this tactic, it definitely broke the South's almost unbreakable spirit, much like the American bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Fun fact he offered Savannah as a Christmas gift to Lincoln after its capture. But still, Grant's the one who beat Lee. So isn't he more important? That's debatable. After Savannah, Sherman marched up to the Carolinas and burned Columbia. His army was compared to the army of Julius Caesar. Bloody hell. So although Sherman was kind of a wacko, he was essential in the victory of the Western Theater and in breaking the South's war to go on? Definitely comparable to both Grant and Lee. Well, let's see. What the class thinks. Well, that was simply a great discussion. I learned from so many unique viewpoints ideas. However, I, Mr. Panda, have reached a different decision. And the winner is... <laughs> President Lincoln. Wait, what? He's not even a general. He's commander-in-chief. And Lincoln was able to supply the North with communication networks, the telegraph, transportation networks, the railroads, a reliable chain of command, and he truly realized that the concept of total war needed to be implemented if the North was to win. But that's not fair. How can you do that? Hey, man. You're the guy dressed in a bunny suit talking like an English woman in the middle of the woods to a talking all-knowing panda. Good point. Goodbye, Mr. Panda. Goodbye, wacko. Were you, Sherman? <laughs>